Welcome to Ford Tech Talk. In this series, we'll focus on tips to help you fix Ford and Lincoln vehicles right the first time. Have your customers come in with questions about white smoke coming from the tailpipe of their Ford diesel-equipped vehicle? Excessive white smoke from the tailpipe may be the sign of a larger issue. Some white smoke from the tailpipe under certain conditions is considered normal. For example, you might see a little when warming up the vehicle on a cold day or during some modes of regeneration, which we'll talk about later in this video. If your customers sometimes have white smoke concerns, though, this video will help you determine what's causing the issues. We're going to take a look at several possible causes, starting by ruling out the easiest components to check first and moving to the more complex repair diagnostics. Before you begin any repairs, verify the customer's white smoke concern. Then, use the Integrated Diagnostic System, or IDS, to identify any diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs that may be present in the Powertrain Control Module, or PCM. Next, check the publications for any technical service bulletins or special service messages on white smoke. In some older 6-liter engines, customers can experience white smoke after a cold engine startup or one of these DTCs. You can find a complete listing in Ford Technical Services Bulletin 924-3. If that combination occurs, refer to the Calibration Content Technical Services Bulletin for additional details and reprogram the PCM using your updated IDS scan tool. It will automatically update the necessary modules to the latest settings. Before you tear into the engine, start by checking for customer modifications. These add-ons may cause a diesel engine to start producing white smoke, and they're often easy to spot and to remove. Ford Motor Company does not endorse any of the following modifications being made to its vehicles. First, check for exhaust modifications the customer may have made. Many Ford diesel-equipped vehicles built after 2007 have a diesel particulate filter or DPF system that traps the diesel particulate matter, the black soot produced by the engine, and burns it down to ash in the regeneration process. These engines have a special exhaust tip that can contribute a minimal amount of white smoke. It disperses part of the exhaust, helping the system to function properly. Changing this tip can create a white smoke issue and alter the function of the exhaust system. Then, check for intake modifications the customer might have made. Changing the type of charge air cooler or performing any modifications to the air intake system to provide increased airflow to the engine could affect the temperature of incoming air and create too much condensation. That could affect combustion, which could produce white smoke from the tailpipe. If you don't find any modifications, check the coolant and oil levels to see if they're low. There could be an external leak causing low coolant or an internal leak causing coolant consumption, leading to white smoke. A low oil level and white smoke could suggest a leaking turbocharger. But if you're still not finding the cause of the white smoke, the next item on the checklist is the charge air cooler. This is generally not the cause in a 6.0 diesel, where the charge air cooler is smaller and doesn't condense the same volume of air. But in other diesel engines, moisture can collect in the charge air cooler and get carried into the intake manifold and engine. When you combine a heavy RPM load with certain drive cycle conditions, such as heavy acceleration, this moisture can move through the intake and burn off, producing excessive white smoke. In a 6.4-liter diesel, there is a special set of circumstances to watch for that can indicate a fault with the charge air cooler. When the white smoke only occurs in high humidity or rainy conditions, and only during moderate to heavy acceleration after 20 minutes of steady-state driving, with no other DTCs present, and you've ruled out excessive regeneration as the cause, then the charge air cooler is likely the cause, due to an older level part. Check the charge air cooler part number to see if you need to perform the TSB. In the 6.7 liter, you'll need to check both the primary and secondary cooling systems, which doubles the items to check. Is there a significant loss of coolant and liquid running out of the tailpipe? If so, there's likely an internal leak in the exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR, cooler. 
and visually inspect for any obvious external leaks around the EGR cooler, but take care not to pressurize the system while checking. That could cause a hydro lock, as coolant may flow into the cylinders when the system is pressurized. On a diesel engine, three different systems work together, the intake, the exhaust, and the cooling system. The EGR cooler is the most likely cause of coolant intrusion into either the intake or the exhaust system. Check the hoses first. If you don't find any external leaks, you'll want to dig deeper. Internal coolant usage can be caused by EGR internal component leaks. For a 6 liter, the EGR valve can be removed and the intake inspected for coolant. For a 3.2 liter, the exhaust back pressure or EBP sensor can be removed at the rear of the horizontal EGR cooler and the port checked for steam or coolant. For the 3.0 liter, 3.2 liter, and 6.7 liter, the EGR cooler will need to be removed and bench tested to confirm any internal leaks. If the fluid in the exhaust is engine oil, you'll need to inspect the turbocharger for a possible seal or bearing failure or both. If the cooling system and turbocharger check out and the engine will run or rotate, you'll want to check the fuel system using the IDS. Check the fuel correction PID data with the IDS scan tool. It should show the fuel correction adjustment that you need to have equal cylinder contributions. If a cylinder is contributing too much, the PCM will make a correction by lowering the fuel correction value. This step happens in an effort to equalize contribution across neighboring cylinders. If a cylinder isn't contributing enough, the PCM will make an adjustment by increasing the fuel correction value. It's these adjustments that help provide a smooth idle. If the PCM is significantly lowering the fuel correction value and the cylinder in question is still contributing too much, that means there's an injector leaking. This situation will likely lead to fuel knocking. Keep in mind, a diesel engine runs on what you feed it. The more fuel, the faster it goes. DPF regeneration can be another cause of white smoke. Regeneration is a different vehicle operating mode triggered when the DPF system needs to burn off trapped particulate to clear the filter. During regeneration, the tailpipe can transmit a lot of heat. Excessive regeneration can cause additional white smoke. Some driving habits, like a lot of short trips and long idle times, can cause excessive regeneration. These habits force the PCM to repeatedly request regeneration cycles. This happens when the vehicle owner doesn't drive to clean long enough for the regeneration process to complete. For more information, see the link to another Tech Talk video on regeneration and drive to clean in the video description. Next, check the glow plug system. The glow plug system in a diesel engine is a starting aid in cold weather. The plugs glow red to help warm the fuel and the combustion chamber to get the engine running. In cold weather, if the glow plug system isn't working properly, there may not be enough heat to burn all of the fuel properly, causing white smoke. First, test the glow plug system with the IDS. Then you can test them with a multimeter to find the fault. Controller issues can range from not working at all in older vehicles to circuit concerns or network issues. Next on the engine diagnostics list is to check the wiring. If there's a fault in the flow of power, that could prevent the glow plugs from working. Look for things like terminal spread, bent terminals, or heat damage. If you've completed this checklist and still not identified the cause, it's time to check the base engine. Next, check the relative compression with the IDS tool. If one or two cylinders have an issue, this will help you identify which ones. If all the cylinders compare with each other, check the air filter and the intake ducts for any signs of dirt or a gritty feel that could suggest dusting. If this is suspected, the intake and turbo will require further inspections. What you're looking for is any kind of rounded edges that look or feel like sandblasting. If there are no signs of dusting, do a manual compression check. This step will help you validate the mechanical health of the engine. First. Always remove all the glow plugs. That's the correct procedure for a compression check. It eliminates the cranking resistance. Unless you can see an obvious issue, Ford recommends that you check all of the cylinders. 
What you're looking for is a compression between 370 to 400 psi near sea level. The other thing that you're looking for is that the cylinders are all relatively equal. There should not be more than a 20 psi difference between the highest and lowest reading. If the compression is low, that could be the cause of your white smoke. The only fuel filters Ford Motor Company recommends for Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles are Motorcraft brand. They help prevent stalling, poor starting, and potential engine failure. They help block impurities and contaminants in your customer's fuel or gas tank before they can clog the injectors or enter the engine. Motorcraft fuel filters remove 90% of particles 20 microns or larger, and the stainless steel case provides excellent corrosion resistance. And when you're choosing parts for all of your repairs, remember that Motorcraft parts feature a two-year, unlimited mileage warranty. That's all for this post. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of our series of installation and repair tips for Ford or Lincoln vehicles. For more information on Ford or Motorcraft parts, contact your Ford or Lincoln dealer or distributor, or visit FordParts.com.